Hi. I am Xavier de Kesselier and this is my life in design. Head of design and head of innovation is like two hats I wear in the company. Head of design means that myself, together with eight other people, we really look after the quality of design of all our projects. And that is globally. You know, we have nine studios all around the world, Australia, China, London, and in the US. And on top of that, I'm also head of innovation. And we are really kind of on the crossroads between design and technology with this. And we do that with a small team of specialists based right here in our London studio. As a kid and as a teenager, I had, I had two um, obsessions maybe, or two things I'd love to do. First one was Lego. I used to love to build Lego. And funnily enough, I used to love to build with space Lego as well. But also as a teenager, I loved programming and to write little code and write my own little software. And somehow I think I've took those two passions together and now I am indeed working in space, working in design, building, and also dealing with a lot of technology. So I do think I somehow bizarrely have put those two passions together in my daytime job. So this is a moon base and you can see the pictures here where we not only worked on the overall master plan, but we're already looking at what it might feel like living there. And can you guess which space this is? This is the bar, you know, because we're going to have about 150 people living in this base. So we thought 150 people, they need to relax a bit in the evening. So we thought, so let's design them a bar. Play. As a designer and an architect, um, you can get involved in so many different types of projects. Like, for example, I'm working with European Space Agency on uh, a new moon master plan. But at the same time, we are working in a refugee settlement to work on a music and art center. And we're also designing a new light fitting. So you see, you can like work on so many different types of projects and so many different places. Um, that's one thing I love about it. But the other thing I love about it is that as a designer, you're kind of an MC, which means you're kind of in control of the overall project and you need to work with lots of different types of people that are experts in their own fields. And it's trying to kind of bring all these things together and somehow come up with one project that kind of puts all that knowledge and all that intelligence together. Well, my day normally starts quite early, maybe seven in the morning. Um, and that is because we have many studios all over the world. So my first meeting will be with our Australian officers who are just at the end of that day, right? So we're working across all of those time zones. For example, this morning, I started up seven in the morning and we did uh, design reviews for a project in, in Australia with, with a bunch of us. Um, but for me, it might then be looking at a design project, working with my team here, um, dealing with lots of other people across the studios, um, maybe doing a site visit as well, going to a site, seeing how one of the projects is going. Sadly enough, it's not always design, you know, it's a lot of kind of admin stuff around that I wish I was always design. Uh, that's still a kind of only a small part of, of, of the work, but it's the most important part. The best piece of advice I got was probably from Norman Foster himself. Um, and he said, we will be judged at your worst piece of work. So always make sure that the best quality, you always do it at every point in your design process. The challenges with design is that design never finishes. You can always make it that little step better, right? Refine it that little bit more. Unfortunately, you know, projects do have deadlines, they have budgets, and you know, that's always a challenge of, of a designer, I think, that you always want to do more but there are deadlines, things need to get built, things need to, so that's always this kind of balance that you have to do with getting as good as you can, but actually also kind of getting those deadlines ready and, and, and on time and on budget. So we're currently working on a project in Northern Uganda. It's just on the South Sudanese border. And I believe it's probably my most important project from my career, because what we're doing there is we're building a music and art center in the middle of the world's second largest refugee settlement. Fairly small building, but what we're trying to do is build the first cultural center in the refugee settlement. Because we believe it's a settlement, but it's probably also a city. 
the Bidi Bidi refugee settlement is has 270,000 people, which is as many people as lived in my hometown of Ghent. And I always think about this, right? So all the opportunities I had, all the buildings that were there, all the cultural buildings that were there, why don't they have it there, right? So I'm really happy to kind of create this building there that will be a center and hopefully a center to more of a city in, in, in the settlement. If you design for something in space, lots of people ask me like, how do you do that? Right, how, how can you do this? Really, it's literally rocket science, right? And I believe it's not that different from designing on Earth. It's a little more extreme, right? So I need to think how we're gonna get the modules to, to Mars or to the moon. But at the same time, when I work in the project in Bidi Bidi in Northern Uganda, we need to figure out how we're gonna get the big roof structure to the, to the site. So the issues are kind of similar always, but in space, of course, they're way more extreme. So for me, designing somehow in different places, it's always quite a similar approach, a similar way of thinking, but there might just be extreme circumstances that make them slightly different. One of the things we always try to do is make it really a home for the astronauts. At the moment, it's always about just surviving in space with astronauts. We want them to thrive in space. So why wouldn't they have beautifully designed furniture and beautifully clean and slick spaces and to live in? And plants, absolutely. And personalized spaces. So my favorite project is probably the Bidi Bidi Arts and Music Center in uh, Northern Uganda. We were able to design a really very complex roof. But in the end of the day, the whole roof is built out of very simple straight pieces of metal and flat pieces of, of roofing. So with simple bits, but actually with a lot of thinking around it, we were able to create a building that looked very different, looks very special from a geometry perspective. And, but in the end of the day, it's made out of simple pieces of, of metal. This whole roof now works as a massive funnel to, create, to collect all the rainwater and collect in the middle of the building. And once it's done that, and we can go to the model here, so the water gets collected, and once we've done that, it actually gets fed through this massive tank so all the, the local community can go and grab water when they need to. As architects and designers, we have a huge responsibility. 38% of all carbon emissions has to do with buildings, building buildings and operating buildings. So as a designer, we are directly responsible for 38% of carbon emissions. It's a huge number. So we I have a huge responsibility and we need to act on this really now for every project that we touch. With the innovation team here at Hassel, we're trying to tackle some projects quite radically, right? We're having one project where we're designing a pavilion that is 3D printed solely out of recycled plastics. And that's one way to kind of start looking and investigating and researching. Can we use all the plastics, all the plastics that we have around to start using that in buildings? On top of that, we're also working on a project in South London. It's called the Oru project. And it's a small project. It's a rooftop extension to a workplace. But what we're doing there is we're only using non-virgin materials, which means we're only going to use materials that have already been used in a previous building. All the materials that you will see there in that building will have had a previous use in another project. I sometimes get asked what my idea would be of a city of the future, right? Because I'm involved in space projects, I look at innovation, and you might think I have like really futuristic ideas of what the city of the future would be. But I think the city of the future is in our current cities already. And what it is, is being able to kind of reuse and adapt our current city fabric to keep on using it longer and longer. So I think adaptive reuse of existing buildings, instead of just knocking down buildings, I think it's really important that we adapt current building stock. So our cities of the future might not look that futuristic. They might look very much like our cities they are today, but they are just inherently more sustainable and regenerative. 
Design means to me what I do every day in everything I do. Uh, you know, it's part of me, it's what I am, it's my passion. And I think with designers, it's never your job, right? It's never your work, it's never, it's, it's you. That's what it is.